Okay, we are online. Yes, recording. As a second talk of today, we have uh, we are very happy to see Leonardo, uh, and uh, we are coming to the subject which has never been yet touched in this uh, conference. Uh, we have a relation to quantum hall somehow, mm -hmm. maybe. Or we not. do. We do. We do. Good. We do. You guessed correctly. So thank you very much. Uh, Misha, for the kind of guinea pig introduction and for the kind invitation to the workshop, which I'm enjoying very much, actually. It's very great to have uh, seminars uh, going on all day here. It's very nice. So, <clears throat> okay, yes, as uh, Misha guessed correctly, so I'm going to speak about lowest lambda level physics, so quantum all effect physics, quasi holes, uh, pin by impurity, so keyword, although I will touch it not really completely directly, but. So what do these impurities do typically? Well, do they create anions? Typical situation, so at least in some, uh, with some non-abelian statistics. And uh, what I want to discuss is how to detect, how to highlight these non-abelian statistics without using interferometry, but using density profile. And I would like to start uh, with a little acknowledgement of the people with whom this work has been done. So it is a collaboration with people that uh, started when uh, the three of them were in Trento. So Jacopo Carisotto, the PI, uh, Tommaso Comparina, who is now um, postdoc at the MS Lyon, and uh, Elia Macaluso, who was PhD student back then and now is in the product. And so you find the references for that for the publication. Of it. Okay, so um, so let's uh, take it uh, from from far far. Outside, so um, pin statistics theorem. Okay, so fundamental particles in uh, four dimensional space time are either bosons and fermions. And it gives you a very good uh, way of uh, dividing them into bosons and fermions. So bosons, integral spin, uh, described by commutative spin. Fermion, half integral spin, described by anti commutative spin. So anything else is an anion, and I think this is exactly this any which appears here. So it's because anything else is an anion. Uh, so can we have something which is not a boson and which is not a fermion? Well, spin statistics here is telling you that you are not going to find it as an elementary particle in our view. But people who look the clever the, the demonstration of the spin statistics theorems have found a, a loophole, which I will try to briefly sketch, if we discuss uh, two spatial dimensions. Um, so our world is not dimensional, but maybe we can consider a quantum flatland, if you want, a two-dimensional many-body system where quasi-particle excitation will appear, which might behave as things. Okay. So two-dimensional many-body systems, uh, we have many of them, uh, just to give you a glimpse of possibilities. So graphene sheet, I mean, uh, very much advertised two-dimensional quantum material. Uh, Two-dimensional electron gases, which are basically at the basis of uh, most of the uh, current uh, of the research. And also, I mean, a bit more uh, connected to my uh, background, uh, two-dimensional atomic gases, right? It's possible to create two-dimensional atomic gases. So in these systems, we can, in principle, it is possible to find that. And now let's look uh, for these uh, anionic statistics. Uh, but before discussing what is an anion and how to find it, so I, I need to pinpoint a little bit more the concept of it. Okay, so what is this anion statistics? Uh, it is not really based uh, on the symmetrization postulate, which is the way we typically teach statistics uh, in the first lectures of quantum. So we do not want to, uh, to, to create the concept of anion statistics using the concept of symmetrization or anti symmetrization of the wave function. We rather want to ask. Uh, what is the geometric phase pick up my, my quantum state after a loop from? So the idea I have in mind is here, you have a two-dimensional quantum anybody system. So blue here would be, I don't know, a gas of boson, fermion, even a mixture in principle. And then uh, I want to create an anion as a quasi-particle excitation in my system, here of course. Then I ask myself what happens if I take an anion and I move it around the other one, along, around the path, okay? My, I have a time dependent system. My system will acquire a dynamical phase. I don't care about it. My system will acquire a geometric phase. I care about it. And uh, there will be a contribution due to the fact that I'm circling another anion. And this actually is 
the quantity which defines the statistics, the quantum statistics of my data. Now, you see here why the argument fails in 3D, because all loops uh, are contractible in 3D. There is no really notion of putting a particle around the other one. Whereas in 1D, loops are not possible because particles in this argument should stay far away. Are away. Instead, in 3D, this idea can uh, lead to non trivial results. Now, in fact, uh, uh, just to be precise, the statistics are not really related to going around the other one, but rather to exchanging the position of two ages. Okay. So if I do this two times, this is basically topologically equivalent at inserting the other one. So um, typically it's the phase which I pick up by doing an exchange, which is the one to which I want to uh, link the quantum statistics. And indeed, I mean, when I exchange the two particles adiabatically, if it is boson, so the wave function should pick up a plus one, which is a phase zero. If they are fermions, it should pick up a phase five. And get a minus sign, which is which is minimal. But if instead I look at abelian anions, I will pick up phase, which is principle generic. Non-abelian anions uh, is a more complicated and interesting situation, actually, because in that case I imagine that my wave function, my ground state, my system is actually degenerate, the the degeneracy, I'm representing it here with a vector wave function. And now when I do this kind of adiabatic motion. The action is represented by a unitary. Um, actually, there has been a lot of excitement related to the concept of uh, anionic statistics because these unitary matrices, which appear here, have been proposed to be looked at as quantum gates for quantum computation. And this observation is the basic of a big research field, which started by observation by, let's say, Dive uh, on a quantum topological quantum computation. So the idea is that. You can actually manipulate information, store information by moving any of them. So I'm just saying that there is a lot of excitement about this, and this is part of the interest in anions, right? but I'm not going to touch this any further. So anions are one of the holy grail in the community working in cold atoms. It's one of them, that is for sure. A lot of people working on this, which would pay a million euros to be able to show it, to create an anion in a cold atom gas and ensure that. Uh, <clears throat> that it, it is there. So today I'm not touching the problem of creating the anion itself. I will assume that we have a platform, we have an experimental platform which creates anions. Okay. The question I want to address is uh, once I have it there, how can I show that it is indeed an anion and not anything else? And by the way, this is not just an academic problem because if you want the solid state community is fighting against this problem continuously, both quantum small effects setups are routinely realized. Uh, but demonstrating that you have anions is much more controversial. And even in Majorana fermions, this is a debate which now goes on in 10 years. Um, so today's talk uh, is about uh, detecting non abelian statistics using density profiles. The idea is uh, I give you actually here, for instance, this is a density profile of a two dimensional quantum gas. Uh, I know I have uh, produced in this case uh, two anions. Uh, which have different uh, the statistical properties, do they know because I did these simulations. Uh, uh, how can we actually say that these are anions and not whatever else uh, if I move them around just by looking at them? And indeed, the idea is that the comparison of these density profiles put in, with anions put by myself in appropriate configuration can give in, information about the non abelian Am I supposed to see that these pictures are different? <laughs> I don't think so. I think you should say, ah, but Leonardo, they look really the same, right? And now I, 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 but they are, but you is, I'm getting that. I'm getting it. Okay. So can, you, can you tell which one is any and which one is not? Well, the point is that from, I mean, I'm cheating a little bit, okay? Because from this, you cannot tell. But if we then uh, um, move the annuals and put them in configurations that we show, then you can even quantitatively tell what is the phase of, of the of the two. And I'm getting that. So, um, okay, so this is the outline of this work. Uh, an introduction, a little bit more on anions. So, what, what is the quantity I really want to pinpoint? Then, in part one, I will tell you what is the idea of detecting anions with density measurement. And in part two, I will apply this uh, to the moon and root wave function. So, one uh, paradigmatic quantum wall effect uh, wave function with it. Okay, so one thing I want to put to, to, I mean, for me, it's important to say every time is that anions are not just a curiosity. Of a theorist, 
but actually are a powerful concept for modeling uh, real life, okay, a real experiment. Actually, when we were submitting this paper, the, the, one of the referees, who is unknown to me, told us that actually there are proofs that even Feynman knew already about the concept of age. Uh, in the 50s, but then discovered this is a theoretical possibility and said, really interesting. Let's do, let's do something more interesting. Instead, uh, Enios have an interest in modeling experimental setups and proposing here two different ones. So this is a whole bar. Okay, these are two whole bars. So basically, a two dimensional electron gas with perpendicular magnetic field. Uh, for some values of magnetic field, this thing is supposed to host Enios. Okay, uh, and there has been a lot of work in trying to show this, actually, especially in the non abelian case. The other case, which is paradigmatic, is the case of Mirana fermions, which is a nanowire, a yeah, one dimensional nanowire, which is proximately coupled with the superconductor, so the effectivity type chain, if you want. Uh, these also should ask the boundary by Mirana fermions here and here. Again, a pioneering experiment in 2012 and still controversial. I think I don't know how many groups are working on this. And there is still a lot of debate going on. Experiment. So today, not speaking about Majoranas, I'm going to speak about quantum mole effect. And um, yes, so um, let's see. Now, I added this slide because I wanted to connect a little bit with the topic of this uh, conference, which is about impurities. Um, so Heavy impurities uh, uh, immersed uh, in fractional quantum mole liquid uh, uh, become effective quasi particles with an statistics. And here I'm listing a, a, a whole bunch of papers uh, which have discussed these uh, extensively. Somehow, even ideas of uh, detecting, of making the scattering between these impurities and detecting statistical properties of these impurities by looking at the scattering properties of, of these objects. Um, so today, actually, I'm, I'm going to consider if you want to look at this uh, from, the scene, from, from, from this viewpoint, uh, if you want to look at my work from this viewpoint, I'm basically considering the simplest situation. So the situation of some uh, potential which is put from outside, okay, which are static, which are not dynamical, because of you know, the static potential which are put in there or there, a field, could be an external laser, for instance. Which localize and pin uh, the impurities in some position of the gas. And again, uh, I want to show that actually they pin uh, non abelian elements without uh, <coughs> using interferometric schemes. Um, okay, so again, the, so how does it work? Uh, this is actually my one to many body system in blue, I repeat, composed of fermions of bosons. Okay, and then I imagine that I have some feeling potential which I can shine like this laser, okay, some position in the cloud. So my Hamiltonian will be the Hamiltonian of the quantum gas, or quantum mole effect gas, which I'm considering here, plus the Hamiltonian of the feeling potential, which are located at this position, eta j. Now, if I look at it uh, dynamically, what I should imagine here is that. I have one, thing, one ground state, for instance, I take this for simplicity the case, but things are not degenerate. I will have an energy gap, and then I continue of excited state. Yeah. And this ground state, I'm going to call it in this way. I have some dynamical degrees of freedom, which are the position of the different uh, bosons of fermions which I'm putting here. And I have uh, the positions of this thing in potential, which are not quantum dynamical degrees of freedom, but are just parameters of my Hamiltonian, which I can see. Uh, a field from outside. Now, um, <clears throat> like I said, I want to, to discuss the anionic statistics of these guys by looking at the notion of adiabatic exchange of particles. So, what I want to do is turn this eta j into some time dependent quantities. Okay. And I want, for instance, to move around my anion, blah, 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 like this, and come, get, come back to the original uh, position. I want to do this adiabatically, and adiabatically, I can do it. Because since they have an energy gap, it is actually gives me the possibility, gives me a time scale with respect to which I can be glow or I can be shot. But the obesity is ensured by the money, many body energy gap. And in this case, well, I can take the initial state and the final state will have taken with respect to the initial one, a dynamical phase, which is just related to the energy of my ground phase. And this is 
not the interesting at all for us, it's trivial. And you see that actually it has the property that it scales with the time which it takes to do this. So it's extended in the time. And then instead, I have a geometric contribution. So you can have the formula for it, although I'm not particularly interested in the exact formula here, which is not uh, extensive, which is not growing linearly with the time, which is a, which has a very it's a finite limit for T capital T going to infinity. And this geometric contribution, well, highlighted by Barry, I mean, it works, it's the, it's the better for it, basically, um, is actually the, the object which I want to, to look at. Um, in fact, uh, it's a little bit more complex than that, uh, because depending on the path which I choose, my geometric part uh, will have different contributions and will behave in different ways. So, for instance, if I look at the red path, okay, here, I have what I call a non topological part of the path. Instead, if I look at the orange and the green path, which I have put here, both of them have a topological part contribution to the geometric phase, which only depends on the fact that they are in circling another end. So the geometric phase of the three paths are all different. Uh, they have a non topological part, which is different in all cases. But the yellow, the orange, and the green have the same topological path. And this is actually what encodes the quantum statistic of the end. Uh, right. So, just, just um, as a simple recipe, I, I could just, by looking at this, I could try actually to, uh, to propose this actually, this scheme actually to obtain the geometric phase. I can put my two ions in different configurations, move around, move around the particle around the same path. In both cases, I will get the same non-topological part, but in this case, I will also get the topological part contribution, which is the statistic. So I can say that my statistical phase is actually related to the difference between these two things. And this is actually the basic of the idea which I want to explore to get the statistical phase. And this is also the, the basic of the idea which has been exploited by people <clears throat> which have proposed uh, the measurement of onion statistics with interferometry. Here we have a quantum mole effect, uh, a quantum mole liquid. We have uh, our boundary mode. And then the idea is that here in the bulk, I have some minions, A1 and 2. And they can detect the statistics of these guys by looking at the interferometry between the green path uh, of the electron, which just moves like this, and the or or red path of the electron, which is that that moves around. But I'm not a solid state physicist, so I want to go to this state and rather actually propose a different uh, way of looking at it. So let me now enter uh, some original result. Um, <clears throat> so does it work to be screen here? Because there was a, lot, a little bit of discussion about it. Can I, can I continue like this? Um, so the idea is the following. So imagine I want to do my blah, blah, blah path by moving around my anions, which are here in red. Right? So what about if instead of rotating the anions, I look at it in the reference frame where the anions are fixed and it's the many body system, which actually rotates around. But yet this is the, 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 the key observation. So if I want to compute my geometric phase, like I said before, by for instance, moving around one anion circularly around the other one, well, if I look at it in the lab reference frame, what I see is my many body system, which is rest, and then my anions, which move like this. But I could actually be, if you want, smarter and look at it in the reference frame. Actually, the two anions are at rest. Okay, all the time, I would simply see, if I could move with them, I would see basically the anions at rest all the time. Um, there is a transformation which links uh, the two reference frames, uh, the two representations, if you want. It's a time dependent uh, transformation. And actually, this tells me that in this reference frame, uh, my Hamiltonian actually gets uh, um, a new term, which uh, is a centrifugal force, if you want. If I look at it in the rotation frame, uh, I get a centrifugal force, uh, which appears here in the Hamiltonian. So this is a time independent problem, which looks much more simpler than this one. So that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to study this problem. And I suddenly realized that things are even easier than I thought, because I have here a gap of many body coming from, 
And here, this term, which is actually a small perturbation, and it is more because it's divided by capital T, which is the time it takes for doing the rotation. I want to be adiabatic, the time is very long. This thing is, is made small by capital T. So basically, in the infinite capital T limit, this is a, a very, very small perturbation. And so if I initialize my system in the ground state of the gap in any body Newtonian during the dynamics, I'm not leaving. It's another way of uh, stating the adiabatic theorem. So, so it's relatively simple to say that the time t, my wave function, well, I can guess if you let this go. There will be a dynamical phase, there will be something else, a gamma of t, which actually like in some mathematics, one actually can show that t gamma of t is simply related to the expectation value of the angular momentum operator uh, in the ground state, in the initial state. So it actually tells me that in this reference frame, at the end of the rotation, my quantum state has, well, the, the, the term here, which is just the dynamical state, I don't care about it. And then there is in addition this phase, which is the exponential of theta f, which is the rotation angle, times the expectation value of the angular momentum operator at the beginning of the rotation. Now, this is a key relation, and actually it unlocks a lot of possibilities because now I can get back to the original representation and obtain a, a final expression for my quantum state at the end of the rotation, from which I can easily separate the dynamical phase, which is here. I repeat, I don't care about it. And the geometric phase, which is the red part here. Um, actually, if I consider a rotation of three, 2 pi, 360 degrees, like I said, I want to do a rotation like this. Now this operator here becomes the unity because it's two pi times z, And so the geometric phase, if I do a rotation of two pi is simply given by this expression. Okay, well, you see the crucial quantity is the expectation value of the angular momentum operator on the initial state. And the question I want to pose is whether I can use this observation and to compute in abelian statistics of my numbers. Right. Right, I have to use the yeah. two pi two pi rotations. So I can consider anions which are posed at opposite position with respect to the center. I do a two pi rotation, I will do something like this. I will get a geometric contribution because it's like one is going around the other one. And I will get sorry, a topological contribution and also non-topological contribution because they move around. Then I can take a second configuration when I put both of them in the same place and I move them around like this. I get the same non-topological contribution because it's the same path around like this. Um, but I do not get a topological contribution because it's not that one is rotating around the other one. So what I propose is that I compute uh, the statistical phase of my of my anion uh, by subtracting the expectation value of the angular momentum in this configuration minus the angular momentum of my system in this configuration. Okay, and uh, well, that this starts to, <clears throat> to be an idea. And actually the density comes now here because we are considering typically uh, states which are in the lowest Landau level. And the lowest Landau level has a beautiful property that the expectation value of LC is actually related to the expectation value of R squared. I don't know if you remember in the, in the symmetric gauge for the quantum for the lowest Landau level, if you have a state with a lot of angular momentum, then it is very broad and far away from the center. If instead, so R square increases, if instead you have a little angular momentum and you're close to the, square, to the center. Now the subtraction, which I told you before, now by looking at this technical formula becomes now a subtraction of expectation value of R squared of my wave function with the two ends either like this or like this. So this tells us that uh, the density profile of my gas has information about the anionic statistics. Okay, well, comparing this with respect to this, the difference of this expectation value of R squared contains information about the anionic statistics. Uh, the problem here is that I'm here taking expectation value of thermodynamical quantities, which are scaling with n, which are scaling with the size. And I am interested in a phase which is of order one. So just to give you, well, uh, 
So this is actually a drawback of this formula, which I'm going to cure now by discussing uh, a specific example. Um, any question about this? Is it more or less clear? You want to discuss? Yeah, yeah please. You put the two, the book. two guys at the same spot, but they care. Ah, okay. They, they, they do put exactly the same spot, but if they are written with different, then you feel that it's okay, right? Um, and so the, the anion is not a point like object, but it is something which is a typical uh, length. Then this um, rotation thing works if the distance between the two is much larger than the typical size of the end. So while you have uh, the situation on top, I think you basically will, will observe a crossover while you move uh, from this situation of slight overlap, imperfect overlap, until they are really separated in the. No, I think I, I, I think you basically will introduce a little error with respect to the with respect to, to what I want to, to exactly measure. This is my interpretation. So if I can, this is basically the data which you have when we are one on top of the other. If for some reason we are not exactly one on top of the other, but it will be a gentle modification with respect to, to the correct one. But it will not be a yes no thing because I believe that the anion has a size so. There is a lot of space for interpolating from the correct to the fully incorrect situation. Um, okay, so the, this we tested in another paper. Um, so I don't have the picture here, but if I have to guess now physically, I would say that you have to be smaller than the typical size of the anion. The typical size of the anion here is the only length which you have, which is the magnetic length. If they are closer, uh, I, I don't think so. I've never heard about this in the quantum model effect, but I might be wrong. Because you know, the problem in the quantum model effect is that at some point you start to work with these variational wave functions by laughing and so and you forget a little bit about dynamics. Right? If you want to consider big samples, at least. More comments? Um, we are happy for that. So yeah. First of all, the relationship between density and statistics is not exactly this result, but it's similar one. Was discussed by Barnett and Friedman. They uh, investigated the quadri formation of the quantum and that we look into the expansion of the density profile. Yeah. Okay, and it turns out that the that the leading moment of the density profile is is directly related to the to the statistical angle. So you might want to, to have yeah, a look at I, I, I mean, I mean, it's about a and Wigman uh, and Zabrodin, I think, also the, the contributor to that. So yeah, the the, the, the idea itself it seems to be right, and and in, in a completely different. Approach discussed it, yeah. So, is, is it a paper which dates back to well, maybe we just can we discuss this? Yeah, sure, bit sure, sure. That, that 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 appeared, I think, a uh, eight years or so ago, okay. So, yeah, so not 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 very long ago. Another question is, um, uh, yeah, it's the, this system apparently your, your system has an edge, yes, yeah, so. Uh, and and that introduced, I think that introduced a bit of a an extra confusion here because you 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 can create angular momentum in different ways and not necessarily related to your quasi particles. You can you can just put extra. As you, I, I I will discuss. Absolutely. Well, I will not discuss this explicitly, but as you will see, when I will come to applying the formula, I will restrict myself just to the bar of being careful. Right. Of being far away from the end. Of course. Okay. Of course. Okay. Could you introduce uh, <clears throat> um, right. So the case of the movie bay function and how can we use this reasoning to get some information? Um, again, I don't want to turn this into a fully, fully quantum model effect talk, actually. So let me just introduce the more read wave function. So for those who are familiar with that, I think they just already know everything. Otherwise, it's just a lowest Landau level wave function, which is uh, can be defined for bosons 
or for fermions, meaning that by turning this parameter n here, I can make it um, either symmetric or anti-symmetric wave function. Uh, for bosons m equal to one, this is anti-symmetric, but this is also anti-symmetric, this function which is in here, or for fermions m equal to two. Um, so the position of the quasi holes of two quasi holes I'm considering here is again eta. I have here eta one and eta two. Uh, I'm not getting into all the details because I, I think it's computationally relevant, but not physically relevant. Of which is this monster in front? It's just the pattern of this matrix. Um, there is actually an experimental interest in this wave function because it was first produced and expected to explain the plateau at mu equal five us. But for those who are in content matter, they should know that right now there is a lot of discussion of what actually is the good wave function here, whether it's Pappian, anti Pappian, or there are a lot of it's, it's a current research topic. So, but what it is important for me is that uh, <clears throat> this wave function is written analytically and people have studied it. And we know a lot about the statistical properties by analytical reasons of these quasi holes, which I put here. So, first of all, for two quasi holes, the wave function is not degenerate. Uh, the quasi holes are not abelian. And, uh, well, the fusion channel, just to speak a little bit technical, but the phase which I pick up here depends uh, on M and on PN, the parity of the number of particles which I can see. So just to make it really clear, I have here a little table. So if I study <clears throat> uh, bosons with an even number of, of bosons, my braiding phase will be 0 0.125 times five. If I consider bosons with another number of bosons, the braiding phase is 0 0.625. For fermions with even is equal to zero and with odd is equal to zero point five. So for those who are a little bit inside into this theory, this just means that these are actually non-abelian elements. And depending on the parity of the number of fermions or bosons, you actually force them in one of the two fusion channels so that the statistical phase is different. But we don't need to know so much. What we can say is that there are four situations which I can study numerically bosons, fermions, even number of particles, odd number of particles. And I can try to test my formula and benchmark the result out of against these known analytical values. Um, okay, so here we go. Um, the formula which I wrote before is written here. Uh, and here, these are a density profile obtained with Monte, Monte Carlo sampling of the wave function. Um, I'm considering here the case of, uh, um, of fermions. I think here is n equal to two. I can read. Yes, and uh, there are here 150 particles. And, um, and well, here I put two uh, anions one on top of the other. And here I put the two anions uh, separating in opposite position. I can do this at least numerically. And here are my density profiles. And now I try to do this calculation and the subtraction which I have to do. And now I suddenly realized that I, I run into this problem, right? Because if I try to estimate this number, it's over the 10 to the 6. And again, like I said, I need uh, what to get order one. And I, I can tell you that at the end, the numerical simulations we did, that, I mean, are Monte Carlo sampling for more than one month. Okay, running on the cluster and on 10 parallel cores that is to get enough statistics. Because actually, getting a good conversion over R squared, it is demanding actually it's, it's much more demanding problem than just computing charge or density profile of the problem. so we try to 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 be a little bit clever and uh, so we ask ourselves where i mean these are local observables so where is this difference significant actually if i subtract the two density profiles and, and I look at them i realize that they are exactly the same everywhere just around the anions, they are different, okay, just here. So it's not true that the information is encoded globally in the whole main wave function, but actually it's just encoded locally around the, the points where it feels that the gas, right, as it should be, right, it shouldn't be uh, everywhere. It's just there. I, sh I should simply look at that. And so what I can do now is uh, to put one anion here, two anions here, okay, and just study this gas and try to get what are the properties here around this uh, point where, where I fish. So technically what we do is we define the depletion density. We actually look at, at what is uh, 
uh, the density difference, if I put the anion or the two anions here, okay, with respect to the flat background, with respect to the situation where I have not put that. Sorry, I don't get why uh, you should have two anions mm -hmm. all, all the time in different places. Yes, but, uh, um, but what I can show is actually if I define this uh, depletion density, okay, if you look at what I wanted to compute, it was this R square related just around the anions. Okay, and now what I do, I, I, I maybe skip a little bit of algebra here, but what I, I want to get to, but I'm commenting this afterwards, is that at the end, I would simply need to compute the depletion density of two anions minus two times the depletion density of one anion. Okay, there is a little bit of algebra, which is skipped because I thought at the end of the talk, then this would become just boring. Uh, but the point I want to make is that uh, this is the quantity I'm interested in. So two times two quasi all, uh, two quasi all minus two times one quasi all. And, I, and then I start integrating right. circularly with a capital R, which is the radius here. And now here, I think I'm answering to your comment because you know, I will be special. careful never to get close to the right. bottom. Yeah. Okay. And I'm especially looking just at anionic growth. So, uh, so, sorry, it's, it's a bit confusing here. So, Please. G, the depletion density is a function. So, what, what is the center? Of, what is the origin in this integral? It's, it's a zero. It's a, it's a zero. zero here. It's in polar coordinates. Now I have R the radius theta. Well, okay. Because yeah. everything is a so then, then I think this is this is almost this uh, subordinate and Wigman Okay, but yeah. then so I, they essentially, yeah, the the the, the, the a certain moment of, of density distribution yeah. near the hole is directly related to the statistics. Okay, then, then I really want to see that. Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, <clears throat> well, uh, well, thank you very much. Uh, well, and, and then well, basically that is it, right? Um, so maybe because we still have time, I think uh, um, I can actually comment a little bit on, uh, on what are the, the depletion densities which I obtained actually. Um, so this is the case for bosons, for instance. Uh, these are the depletion densities um, for one. So in blue, I have the case with uh, all the uh, even number of fermions, which is 150. So this is the depletion density of one fermion, and this is the depletion density, of, sorry, of one anion and of two anions. Okay. If I instead consider the other case with 149 uh, uh, bosons, you have the depletion density of one, which is like this, and of two, which are the same shape. For just to see what we are computing as basically the second moment of this distribution, and we are comparing the two second moments. If I just would look just at the zero moment, which would be charged, then it would be zero, the integral, which is because one integral is double, but the other one is multiplied by. Um, so these are the results, which con constitute basically the main result of, of the talk, if you want, or the main numerical results. So let's focus on fermions first, which is where we have the best results. Um, for an uh, even number of fermions, I said that uh, the phase should be 100, 0.100. Uh, 25, I think. I forget. This is the black line which we wanted to benchmark. And you see that by integrating the larger, the larger, the larger, I actually get there more or less where I wanted to be. Now, what are the problems here? First of all, that there is an R square which is increasing regions which are the importance of regions which are close to the boundary. So you need a big sample, which is difficult to sample with Monte Carlo, and you need a big acute to start to have a and you, start to, and, uh, and you start to be dangerously close to the to the boundary. Uh, again, here 100 and, uh, 0 0.625 for uh, all the fermions. I think it, uh, it also works. For bosons, we are unfortunately getting results which are a little bit worse. Uh, the blue line, I think it's kind of fine. Uh, for the orange one, we still have a lot of uh, oscillations. And here, uh, the problem is we would need uh, bigger samples and bigger accuracy. In this respect, one thing I'm wondering, and I would like maybe to discuss if somebody actually does that, is that people have been proposing now uh, matrix product states for quantum, uh, quantum, for quantum all effect. And I wonder whether there it would be possible with less numerical effort to produce beautiful density profiles which could then be analyzed with this method. But with Monte Carlo, I think this is the best uh, possible. 
And um, so can we actually turn this into an experimental work? Well, there is the problem of accuracy, which I'm not going to discuss here, because of course, if it is an accuracy for Monte Carlo sampling, then it is also a problem, an issue also for, a, for an experiment. Um, but the idea would be to create first a separated quasi hole and reconstruct their density profile. Then uh, create two uh, separated quasi holes and bring them close by and reconstruct the density profile of this double quasi hole. In this case, you can actually have both vision channels, meaning that you can have uh, odd or even frames, as I don't know, uh, or even number of frames. And then by analyzing these uh, uh, density profiles uh, with the formula I gave you, you should basically compute the statistical case of your, of your association. Mm -hmm. um, right, so in concluding uh, um, the last five minutes, I guess, uh, um, so this method, uh, it's, it's a way of extracting information about the statistical phase of quasi holes using density profiles. I have discussed with you the paper where I contributed, which is the moderate wave function, but there are also data, possible to rerun data for laughing wave function as well, where things are actually easier because one can use here even the plasma analogy to boost a little bit the simulation. And uh, the people, I mean, uh, uh, at in front of it, even did it uh, for a big uh, lattice uh, study of a uh, Laughlin wave function on a lattice, getting results uh, which are uh, consistent uh, with the stati expected statistics of these enemies which are created. So, um, which actually brings me a little bit on the perspective of this kind of ideas and features. I'm getting to the, to the answers. So, First of all, it would be interesting to establish a connection with experimentalists, uh, which are planning to realize this kind of experiments. Uh, for me, an issue which remains here is that I don't know what is the kind of accuracy they can aim at uh, in, in a density profile measurement and whether that would be enough uh, actually uh, to use this formula. Um, I would be very interested in testing this formula actually on the density profiles obtained with matrix for the states. I, I think that these tools should actually boost a little bit uh, the numerical possibilities of studying many body quantum effect wave functions. So I think that could actually uh, be an, another step forward. Um, I wonder, and this I really don't know, whether this formula has an analog for anions which do not appear in the lowest Landau level, because I have used the disconnection between angular momentum and radial density. But that is specific to the low level, whether that has an analog in other setups, I don't know. And also, um, I have tried to re understand the formula uh, from another viewpoint. Now I presented it as a second moment of the depletion density. Um, but it can also be interpreted as a difference in the rotational properties of two anions with respect to one anion. So the anion is an object which is big, which is a spin, which is an angular momentum. And uh, well, it rotates differently if it is alone, like a single dancer, or if it rotates in pairs or one on top of the other one. And actually it is possible to link, I mean, to, to start from the formula I gave you and uh, derive a formula, which gives you that the anion statistics is, is just the difference on the rotational properties of this. And to highlight that we actually, and this is the last slide, we have actually computed the angular momentum of uh, anions uh, or single and two anions. So actually these are Laughlin, Laughlin state simulations. So here you see the density profile as a function of the radial distance in the case of one quasi hole or in the case of two quasi holes. So you see they're a little bit different. The depletion density is also a little bit different here. And now if you compute the charge, which is just the integral of this density profile, you get the expected value, one third and one sixth. And if you instead compute these integrals, which I gave you here, you find that both in the case of one or of two and of two anions, you get an angular momentum, which is approximately 0 0.3, uh, 32, one third. Now, one third minus two times one third gives you one third. And again, you have shown that actually the statistical phase is one third just by looking at different rotational properties of the two angles. Now, I think I'm done with my time. So, with that, I think I would like to thank you for the attention and happy to take questions. Right. Thanks.
uh, your, your particle right now do not have any dynamics, actually. You are just, you know, pinning a hole with a laser. Yeah. So uh, when you think about a particle and an anion in particular, you imagine something with, you know, a possible dynamics. Is it something that could be induced, you know, or, uh, with yeah, your system, be. or is it still, you know, more? Uh, uh, I mean, I think there are works. Uh, maybe I'll try to get back there. <clears throat> so people actually ask already the question you were asking if you want. So these are actually people who have said, let's take a, a fractional quantum of fluid, like I said before. And rather than just uh, create the impurity with a laser, like let's put uh, a heavy impurity, like uh, like we are doing in this workshop. Let's say a really heavy one that would be better because then you have the fast degrees of freedom, which are the electrons, and heavy degrees of freedom, which are my impurities. You can do born Oppenheimer, uh, okay. and then if you look at the effective Hamiltonian for these heavy impurities, it's the Hamiltonian of an anion in the in the most. Uh, let's say most uh, standard way according to this in the 80s or 90s and then you become an anion with some dynamics okay. and then you can imagine to do something like we are doing here where you send two of them one against the other one and you look at the scattering properties of these guys and you reveal them as a statistical phase of these particles so what i would like to do actually here is to dig a little bit more into this kind of literature and understand also if the kind of density profile measurement I have proposed can also work in this context where I have dynamical impurities rather than just static background impurities and check if what I have proposed works also there. Okay, thank you. Yeah. those iron heart people who are still online with us we are losing them but still thanks for those who are keeping probably questions from you um, well as usual, either nothing was clear or everything was so much clear that people can't ask any other questions and uh, run to continue this work. Okay, that's it, no? Uh, yeah, waiting for the future. And for today, uh, we are done. Uh, those who are here remember that we have a conference dinner as usual every week those who are not here think maybe you will come here and have conference dinner as a bonus we stop the recording thanks